All right, class. So now we're going to cover section 8.4, which is testing a claim about a mean when our sigma, so our standard deviation is unknown. When our standard deviation is unknown, that's when we're going to be working with a t-test or a population proportion. So let's take a look. So let's check out what our assumptions are. First, our assumptions are that our sample is a simple random sample. Our standard deviation is unknown, and we're going to use S, that's our sample standard deviation, in our computations. And either or both of these is true. So our population is normal, or our N is greater than 30. Our sample size is greater than 30. Remember, these are the conditions to use a t-test. That and our standard deviation is unknown. Our test statistic is going to use the student t distribution. So we compute the t test statistic as follows, right? It's the same as the z-score, but we take that t-score to a t-table. And our instead of having our standard deviation be for the population, it's for our sample. When we are working with critical values, right, that's one way for us to prove our hypotheses. So um, just like in chapter seven, um, the critical values are found in table A-3 in your appendix. That's the T distribution table. I'm also gonna post one of those separately to our online platform. Um, degrees of freedom is still our sample size minus one. And you need to know if the test is gonna be one or two tailed when you use table A3, okay? Um, so remember, if it's a one-tailed test, it uses a less than or greater than in our alternate hypothesis. And if, so that gives us one tail. And it's two-tailed if it uses a does not equal. So be sure to make sure you know whether it's a one-tailed or a two-tailed test. So let's talk about some important properties of the student's T distribution. So the distribution is different for different N, right? It's gonna change based on our degrees of freedom. The distribution has the same general bell curve as a normal distribution, but it's usually a little bit wider. And the distribution has a mean equal to zero, um, but the standard deviation varies with n, right? And n is greater than one. So as n increases, the t distribution gets closer and closer to the normal distribution, right? That's why we need a sample size of greater than 30. That's when it starts to get pretty close to the normal distribution. So let's use the traditional method which uses critical values for this example. So let's use a significance level of alpha is 0.01 to test the claim that our mean is less than 9 to 927. Um, so our sample data consists of 10 scores. These 10 scores are our sample size. The 10 scores have a sample mean of 874 and a sample standard deviation of 57.3. So our null hypothesis always has an equal sign, right? Our null hypothesis is that there's no difference than a mean of 927. And our alternate hypothesis is that the mean is going to be less than 927. So here we have the formula for our t-distribution. We substitute in our sample mean minus the population mean over our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, and we get negative 2.922. Remember, this is a test statistic. So we're going to a t-table, not a z-table. So we go to our test statistic, and we know that this is a one-tailed test. And we know this is one tail because our alternate hypothesis was that our mean is less than 927. That right there tells me it's one-tailed. So we use the information that it's one-tailed, that our alpha is 0 0.01, and our degrees of freedom is nine. We got that because degrees of freedom is n minus one, and our sample size was 10, so that gives us nine. 
and we have a t value of negative, sorry, I forgot a negative right there, 2.821. And the critical value is that. That's our critical value. So we go into our t table and we find that this is going to be our critical value. That's the t value we calculated. And we look up the test statistic t in our table and we get negative 2.922. And this lies in the critical region, so we reject our H naught. For the second example, for each of 12 organizations, the cost per operation per client was found. 12 scores, so our sample size, have a mean of $2,133 and a standard deviation of $345. So here's our sample mean. At the 0 0.01 significance level, so here we found our alpha, we want to test the claim of a stockholder who complains that the mean for all such organizations exceeds $1,800 per client. So our null hypothesis is that the mean equals $1,800. And our alternate hypothesis is that the mean exceeds, if something exceeds expectations, it's better or greater than expectations. So we're going to go greater than 1800 Okay, so now we have our null and our alternate hypothesis. This is one-tailed because I have a greater than symbol and it's gonna be right-tailed. So we have all our information given to us in the problem. We have our null hypothesis and our alternate hypothesis. We can take all the values given to us and use them to calculate our T statistic. So I have T equals our sample mean minus our population mean. That gives me S divided by the square root of N, right? So I have find that my T value is 3.34. Now, I use this information to find my critical value in the T table, right? I use it to locate this value. My degrees of freedom is 11 because my sample size was 12. My alpha is 0.01, it's one tailed, so we go to the t table and find this value. Now, we had originally calculated a t value of 3.734. That's going to be over here somewhere. This is in the critical region, right? Because it's above our t value that we found in the table of 2.718. So we reject the H naught. So we can conclude that the claim of a stockholder who complains that the mean for all such organizations exceeds 1800 per client has been substantiated by our efforts, i.e. we had enough statistical evidence to reject our null hypothesis.